Hi, my name is Steve Weil with Birding & Weil, a community association and construction defect law firm. Today I want to talk a little bit about a piece of the Davis-Sterling Common Interest Development Act, and that's the piece that concerns elections. It's a phenomenally complicated piece. The legislature enacted a law in 2006 affecting four of the main kinds of elections in homeowner associations. The election and removal of directors, the increase of special assessments or the increase in regular assessments, the amending of governing documents, and the giving away of common area. The law was so complicated and the legislature almost immediately recognized it that the law was changed almost right after it was enacted. Again, this was back in 2006. So one of the really vexing parts of this law is that some parts of it override an association's governing documents, some parts of it override the California Corporations Code, some parts only fill in gaps, and some parts defer to those existing authorities, whether in the Corp Code or maybe it's in the bylaws. So here are some of the election law basics that trump the existing CCNRs and bylaws for an association. The first one is the minimum voting period for these kinds of elections is 30 days. That's a change most reflected the current law as it was in 2006 to be only 10 days. Secondly, the election law requires that we use secret balloting so the name of the voter cannot be identified. The ballots have to be counted at an open meeting. They have to be counted by one or three neutral election inspectors. Now that neutral is important. That means it can't be a director it can, or the spouse of a director. It can't be a candidate. It can't even be the manager or the association's lawyer unless the election rules say that that's okay. One of the things about the election law is that the association has to have election rules and they have to mirror those requirements in the law and there are some set of specific requirements that have to be included. Now, the election law doesn't trump in every situation. For example, the election law doesn't dictate the qualifications for a candidate running for the board. Some bylaws may say the candidate has to be a record owner. In others, the candidate has to be a member in good standing, but that isn't dictated by the law and those requirements would remain and they can't be changed unless the documents that have those qualifications, usually the bylaws, are amended. Another thing that didn't change is cumulative voting. If the association still has CV to elect directors, the election law didn't change that. And the same for use of proxies. If they're permitted under the documents, then the election law doesn't change that. Navigating the election law is pretty tricky, and it comes up once a year at least for elections. If you'd like more information, give us a call.